Hello everybody, today let's go over the different types of columns and filters that you can apply on your screener. Understanding the columns and applying the filters allows you to organize your stocks and your watch list. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the columns and filters. So I'm currently located on the screener on the right hand side right now. And as you can see, this is a fresh option screener. I'm currently looking at the S&P 500 index and there will be a variety of different columns that we can sort through. So the first column we have the market capitalization. So the market capitalization is the total value of a company's outstanding shares of stock. It's calculated by multiplying the stock price by the total number of shares. So for example, let's say a company has 2 million shares priced at $10 each. Therefore its market capitalization will be $20 million. Market cap helps investors understand the size of the company and can really influence investment decisions because larger companies are often considered more stable while smaller companies might have higher growth potential. So the next column we have here will be the implied volatility percentile. Implied volatility percentile is a measure that indicates how a stock's current implied volatility compares to its historical volatility. Essentially, it shows where the current level of implied volatility stands relative to the past on a scale from 0 to 100. So therefore, if we have a high reading, a high percentile, that's suggesting that the current implied volatility is higher than historical readings. That's going to indicate increased uncertainty and increased risk about the stock's future price movements. On the flip side of the coin, if we have a low percentile, then that will indicate that the stock is currently less volatile than usual. Right here, we have the last price of the stock. When the market's open, this is updated every five minutes. When the market's closed, this is updated every 30 minutes. Okay, it's a great way to keep track of the current price of the ticker. Next up, we have the percent change compared to the last trading day. This one's very simple. You just simply look at it. We can see Kinder Morgan right here. We're up 0.52% compared to yesterday. On ELV, we're down 3.06% compared to yesterday. Super simple. Next up, we have the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is a statistical measure that reflects the amount of variation in a stock's price. A reading of zero means average movement. If we have a large positive number or a large negative number, that means larger movement. Next up, we have today's option volume. This one is pretty simple and straightforward. This one is giving us the information of how many contracts, how many options contracts were traded today. Okay, this is the number of options traded today across all of the expiration dates inside of the option chain. All expiration dates, all options, it's giving us how much volume was traded. Typically, if you have higher volume, that means there was more activity. If we took a like, take a look at AVGO right here, AVGO is Broadcom, LTD, a more popular company, has a larger market cap as well. You can see $845 billion compared to some of these other ones, which is $103 billion or $15 billion. $845 billion is much, much larger. So therefore, this is a larger company. And as you can see, we have much, much more options traded. So option volume right there. We have the put to call ratio. Very Keep things very simple. If we have a reading of less than one, that means there is more calls than puts traded. If we have a reading higher than one, then there are more puts traded than calls. Keep it very simple. If we have a green number and it's less than one, we are in positive bullish territory, or the sentiment is relatively bullish. If we are currently above one with a red number here, then the sentiment is leaning more bearish, something to consider. Next up, we have the open interest. So open interest and volume are going to be two very, very similar columns. The open interest will be implying the number of options outstanding that were traded across all expiration dates. And this is for today only. The open, interest re the open interest reveals how many contracts, how many options contracts are currently open within the broader market on that particular stock. So we have DFS with an open interest of 87,000. So there are 87,000 contracts floating around. The volume is telling us that 2.5 thousand of those contracts were traded today, back and forth. But the 87K implies that there are 87,000 contracts floating around. People own them, people are trading them, whatever the case may be. So the open interest will typically be much higher than the volume because this is the total amount of open contracts, whereas the volume, it's giving us how many contracts were traded back and forth today.
Next up, these final few columns, we have the number of days until the next earnings events. We have the number of days until the next dividend event. And we have the number of days since the last earnings event. And finally, we have the beta right here. So the beta measures a stock's volatility in relation to the overall market, com typically compared to the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 will always have a beta of 1. That's going to be the market benchmark. Okay, so if we have a stock that is greater than one, then we can imply that the stock is usually much, much more volatile than the overall market. Okay, if we look at FCX right here with a beta of 1.9, that's indicating that we have a higher volatility than um, normal. Okay, that's going to be almost nearly twice as volatile as the S&P 500, which has a beta of one. If we take a stock with, let's say, a very low beta, let's say... 0.5, which is Walmart right here. Walmart has a beta of 0.5. Therefore, we can conclude that Walmart is only half as volatile as the overall S&P 500. So those are essentially your columns right there. Thanks for watching.